Ja, hallo, liebe buff user Heute hat uns der Simon Finch von Tryon besucht mhm. und äh, wird uns ein bisschen was über das, äh, die neuen Updates erzählen und äh, das Free-to-Play-Modell. Und ja, um, for the start, can you introduce yourself and tell us something about your job? Uh, in the industry for a long time now. A uh, mm. very long time. I think I published my first game in 1983. So, long time. And what was it? What was it? Oh, it was on the ZX Spectrum. It was called. It was a game called SOS. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's your job now at Tryon? Um, I'm the senior design director at Tryon, which means I work with and run the design team that uh, makes Rift. Okay, mm. and uh, how long do you have been working? How long have I been at Tryon? Uh, about four and a half years. So okay. about two years before we launched Rift. So Rift's been out for about two and a half years, and I was there for a couple of years before that. And uh, Rift is free to play now. It is. <laughs> we have been free to play for about a month now. Um, it's been amazing because suddenly a whole lot more people came into the game. Uh, we had a load of people playing before. Now we've got a load times 10. Yeah, you, you have always <laughs> done a good job uh, regarding yeah. updates and uh -huh. stuff you brought into the game. Uh -huh. So what was the reason for the conversion? Uh, it was really just the right time to do it. I mean, we've um, continually asked ourselves over the time, ever since we launched Rift, uh, is the um, subscription model the right thing for us? And we would periodically ask that question. Uh, we looked at several different possibilities of extending the Rift Lite up to level 50, but eventually we decided, no, the right thing to do is go free to play. The market has changed. It's a much more acceptable um, business model now. Um, and we just wanted to remove that last barrier so that everybody could come and play Rift. I mean, the team makes the game because they love the game and they're proud of the game. They just wanted to show it to as many people as possible. So now there's absolutely no reason to come and Okay, it has not to nothing to do Rift. with, like, uh, Tryon has uh, overextended financially with no. uh, the no, development no, no. of other games. I mean, no, we were doing fine. I mean, Rift has uh, always been successful, and it was just—it was much more about just making sure that it was open to as many people as okay. we possibly could. I think it's um, part of the evolution of the MMO market. Now. I think it's part Is of the, the evolution. Is the subscription model dead? Uh, you know, who knows? I mean, that's predicting the future. Right now, it's not looking so good for the subscription model, I'll yeah. say that. But it, and, and I don't think it's just MMOs. I think it's uh, the games industry as a whole. Um, people want to be able to try something and find out if they like it before they decide whether they're going to give you any money for it. I mean, I don't think there's a gamer out there that hasn't sort of paid $60 for a game and they've taken it home and they've put it in their console or in their PC or whatever and they're like, God, this is rubbish. And, I, <laughs> and you just feel like you got ripped off for $60. So I think they love the fact that they can come and try something and if they like it, it's like, you know what, this is worth me giving some money. So that's definitely uh, been really happy for us. We love people to come in and try our game and, and we, feel, we feel that we've got something that people are going to want to play. Okay, so. it's successful right now? Yes, okay. amazingly so. <laughs> can you tell me no. some numbers? No. <laughs> uh, the reason, it's not, I mean, I would love to. There's nothing I'd like to do more than brag about our numbers, mm. but there's some people that I'd rather not hear those numbers. So. Do you see what, um, what are the most favorite items in, in the shop? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have over 5,000 items uh, on our store, and uh, it's fun seeing what people really, really like. I mean, yeah, the, I'm a big fan of pets. And you are, yeah, there's a lot of pets on the store. Uh, people love the pets. Uh, they really love the mounts. Um, Rift has always had amazing looking mounts, um, and there's even more of them now. Um, so they, they're really great. Um, the costumes, there's a lot of amazing costumes. All, uh, pretty much all of them can be dyed different colors, and so the n number of looks that you see suddenly exploded. I mean, it was always pretty amazing what people managed to do with the costumes, and now it's just sort of multiplied like crazy. Um, I would like to point out that all of the things that you can buy in the store are really just uh, fun items. They're convenience items or just like entertainment items. There's nothing on the store that is going to uh, make you a better player than somebody else. We really didn't want to go down that route. Everything in the game that you need to play the game is uh, free. All of that's always yeah, free. Yeah, because uh, before the start, uh, some people are arguing about um, pay to armor. Win. Yeah, yeah. Stuff no, we didn't want to do that. Um, you always have to play to get uh, the best 
things. to get the highest level raid gear or the highest level PvP gear or anything that you actually need uh, to make your character viable, yeah, you have to play the game to do that. So, okay, the best stuff is in the raids. Uh, well, it depends on what kind of um, content you like to play. I mean, uh, if you're a PvPer, then maybe you might want to um, get the best PvP gear, and they're, they're slightly different. Um, but yes, it's all in the game. If you want actually the best stuff, you've got to play the game, and, and you earn it through the game. You can't just like buy your way to the top. Yeah. And uh, how's exactly the plan for the business model in the future? Do you want to add some new stuff? Oh, absolutely. I mean. So, I mean, I'm only going to talk about personally what I want to have happen is I, I love Rift and I love what we've made and I love people coming and playing it and I want to make sure that we continue for that always to be free. I mean, all of the updates that we have planned that we can talk about in a bit, is, uh, they're all going to be free. Um, my assumption is that people will come and play the game, decide they really like the game and they'll stay and they'll play and they'll get hooked in the world that we've made. And they'll go, you know what, I like these guys. They made a good game. I'm going to go buy a hat on the store, you know. So, and it is amazing. That seems to be working so far. And uh, I just um, am going to assume that uh, that's the way it's going to work forever until I get proved wrong. <laughs> so you said uh, you want to... Um uh, give people new updates and expansions for yes. free, so you yes, always for bring free. new areas to the game and classes maybe for free? Well, the classes, no. I mean, any anything that we uh, feel is necessary, in other words, content, we don't want to split our players up into those that have paid and those that haven't. So the content and places you can go and all of the stuff you can explore, dungeons, raids, all of that stuff, that will always be free. Um, there are some things that we feel are not 100% necessary. I mean, when you first get the game, you, you get eight souls. That's more than enough to make any kind of character you want. So we put the Storm Legion souls. You, you, if, you've, if you've had a, an account before, you get to keep those. But if you're a brand new player, you've never played Rift before, um, those are on the store for purchase. And the new souls that we plan to um, unveil in 3.0 are also, they will go on the store. Because they're not needed, you don't have to have those. They're just, uh, you know, they're something for fun, they give you a bit more flexibility, but they're not necessary. So we feel we're justified in those cases to put that kind of stuff on the store. Um, but everything else is free, yes, all of the, the content. So if you don't want to pay a dime, you just want to come and, and play the game, by all means, you're welcome, come and play, you don't have to pay at all. Um, we're happy to have you, we love what we've made, we want you to see what we've made, we're proud of it. And if you're there playing the game, you are, you know, you're content for other players as well, you know, I mean, that's the thing about MMOs, is the, the players are content for other players. So even if you're not directly giving us money, you're still adding value to the game. So we're happy to have you. So how you can, can you stand out against other MMOs in the market? Is this complete free to play thing, you're part of the plan to... To rule the, the market. To rule the world? Absolutely, <laughs> I'm going to rule the world. It's like, uh, no, but I really actually do believe that. I mean, I, I don't want our players to feel like uh, they are just there for us to squeeze every last bit of money out of them. I mean, uh, that's not why our team made the game. Our team made the game because they're passionate about MMOs, they're passionate about the game they made. And they're proud of it. I mean, they're proud. The people that made this, including myself, we're really proud of it. And we, it's like when you're proud of something, you want people to see it. It's like, come and look at what I made. You know. Um, so, yeah, I, I fully believe that if we have made a game that people want to play, they will buy some things on the store because there's some cool stuff on the store, and or, or they might just buy something on the store because they think, you know, those Tryon guys, they're pretty cool. They've made a great game. I'm going to support them and give them a bit of my money and make sure that they're around for a long time so that they can conti uh, continue to deliver content. That's, that's our plan. We'll see. Ask me in a year's <laughs> time if we're ruling the world. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> uh, what is the team currently working on? What are we currently working on? Uh, well, there are several different things going on at the moment. We have a, a team that is uh, currently putting the finishing touches on the, the Summerfest. We're bringing uh, players that have been in Rift for a while will remember Summerfest from last year. Uh, it was like a scavenger hunt. You had to go around and, and find pets and yeah. stuff. Uh, that They've extended that out to all of the new Storm Legion zones and added a, f a little bit of new content. 
Uh, we've added a few things to the store, especially for summer. You get some pretty cool swimming costumes are, will be available. Uh, so there's a group doing that. Uh, there's a group that is just finishing up um, stuff on, on 2.4 that is all about instances. There's a, a couple of raids. 20, a couple. 20, it's like a, a combined, it is split into two. You can, so you can, can do them individually or you can do them together, mm. one after the other. But they are basically individual. But So yeah, two raids, basically. 20-man uh, raids, a uh, five-person six, level 60 dungeon, which is a new telling of Realm of the Fae. That was a big fan favorite, Realm of the Fae, and it's also a personal favorite. Um, but So we've, we're we retelling a different story in that of uh, like Atrophinius's nightmare. I mean, Atrophinius, is, as you may know, is sort of like a, a, a feature character yeah. in, in, in Rift. Um, and as we moved, towards 3.0, which we can talk to a little bit more in, in a minute, is um, is also about dreams and madness and nightmares. So this this uh, um, version of Realm of the Fae is sort of like Atrophinus's nightmare. Um, and then a couple of uh, chronicles. So this really, this next uh, big update is really all about instances and people playing in uh, raids and dungeons and, and chronicles. And for those that don't know Rift, uh, a chronicle is a dungeon that is um, uh, scaled for you know two people really. I mean, if you're really good and you've got some really great gear, you might be able I'm to not do good it enough. on your own. No, no, I get murdered in those things too. <laughs> it's like, but if I go in with a friend, they're sort of like you know you and and your uh, you know significant other or you and your buddy. You can go in and uh, have a really good time. And we've we've dialed those up a bit. They were quite quite a bit more um, difficult and challenging. That was something our players asked for. Uh, We've always been very responsive to our community. They, you know, we listen to what they like and what they don't like, and we interact with them a lot. And, what they and don't like? What they don't mm -hmm. like? Oh man, it's just like well, there's always somebody that doesn't like everything, and there's always somebody <laughs> that loves everything. So it's just it's a bit always a bit of a balancing act, you know. So one of the things they asked for, which I suppose you can say uh, there was something they didn't like, they they didn't want things to be too easy. Uh, we do do a lot of content that is quite uh, easily consumable. You know, the quests are relatively um, easy to do and stuff like that. But they wanted, particularly in instances, they wanted to feel there was a bit more challenge. So starting uh, with 2.3 that we just released, the uh, Queen's Gambit Chronicle is, is quite a bit more challenging than, than some of the other ones that have come before it. And, and we're uh, continuing that through because it went over really well. Players really liked the uh, Queen's Gambit Chronicle, which was quite punishing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, can you tell me something about 3.0? I'll tell you anything you want to know. <laughs> um, I will say though, but because 3.0 is you know at least a year away, it will be an expansion. Which it is. is it is. It is an, it'll be an expansion that's free. When it's not, it won't be in a box or anything okay. like that. So it's you know we call it an expansion. You don't because have any plans to sell it as a box for? Not right now. No. I mean, you know, I get asked that a lot, and you know. Like I say, it's, a, it's at least a year away, so who knows what the plans will be as we get a little bit closer to launch. But right now, the plan is uh, for it to be uh, download only. I mean, it, there will be a download, and it will be free, regardless of okay. whether we decide there's a collector's edition as well. But I mean, that's, that's something for our marketing people to figure out. I just make the game. <laughs> um, but I do know that we plan for it to be free, it will, and we call it an expansion just because of the scale of it. Uh, it will be increasing the level cap to uh, level 65. There'll be four more souls coming along with it, a bunch more zones, and the players are going to get to go to the plane of water. So finally get to explore one of the planes for real. I mean, they, they have been to the plane of death, kind of, when they went to kill Regulus in, in the Regulus raid, and they um, will be going to the plane of Earth in the upcoming 2.4, where uh, one I of the raids... I saw a picture of a map, and uh, there will be underwater leveling areas, or...? Uh, well, we are still, as I say, so, like, because we're talking such a long way out, uh, anything I say now is liable to change. You know? So if uh, a year from now when you're playing in 3.0 and you remember something I said and go, but wait a minute, he said this was going to be in it. And it didn't. <laughs> eh, I'm sorry, we make we change things we need to do. But there definitely will be some underwater content. Uh, how much, we are still trying to figure out. I mean, we get a lot of players saying, oh yeah, I, I love underwater dungeons, I want underwater dungeons. Like, 
yeah, do you really like that? <laughs> or are you just saying that? So what we're actually going to do is put some underwater content much earlier than 3.0. So actually some of it will start showing up quite soon. Just a little bit of it, just to see, and we'll see. Hey, you really like this? If you like this, that will help guide us how much underwater content we actually put into the plane of water. Um, water comes in many forms, and you know, there's ice as well. That's nice and solid. You don't <laughs> have to worry about that. There's steam, and also for anyone that knows um, rift and the planes and how they work, it's not just about the element of water. The uh, plane of water is also about madness and dreams and nightmares. For anyone that's played um, the water saga that's in the game right now, they know that it was all about actually going crazy. It wasn't particularly about water. So. We have options to make the plane of water never take you underwater if we want, but we know that players want it, so we're just trying to figure out how much should there be. So yes, there'll be some. How much there will be, we are beginning to figure that out. Uh, because fighting underwater can be challenging to make that fun. And we want to make sure that whatever we do, it's fun. Okay. Uh, yeah. Where do you see Rift in five years? Where do I see it in five years? That's where we'll be owning the world. <laughs> <laughs> Five years, yeah, I'll take about five years. Uh, you know, I hope that in five years we have, uh, by then we should have done a, oh, at least five more expansions, right? So um, we are aiming to try and do huge updates like that around about, yeah, it takes a little over a year maybe because we also do a lot of updates in between that are by no means small. Uh, for anyone that, you know, experienced 2.3, we opened up a whole new zone and uh, new raids, new dungeons, new chronicles, and we put in the, the uh, free-to-play shop. So um, we have a lot of work to do in between each of those big updates. But yeah, I hope that we still have as vibrant a community as we have today in, in five years' time. And I don't see why not. It's been going strong for two and a half years. So it's good. Okay, and the next big thing is 2.4? Uh, that is the next big thing, yeah. We, we talked about that. That's the, uh, the instances. The, the release the, is planned for? September. September. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you have yeah. an exact date? Uh, you know, I don't know whether they've announced mm -hmm. an exact date. I don't have it at my fingertips. I can't remember, but it's, yeah, that's September. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a date up on the board somewhere that I should know, but I can't remember it. <laughs> um, and then we do have uh, 2.5 uh, and 6 and 7 pretty much planned. And then depending on where we deliver 3.0, we may put in some other updates in between as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff coming. Yeah. Okay. Do we have planned anything for PvP players? Uh, yes, absolutely. We, I mean, okay, I'm going to talk about something that's a little bit secret, I guess. Um, so uh, we are still putting the finishing touches on this, so things may be uh, liable to change. but. Um, one of the really exciting things that I think for PvP players is something we're calling PvP Dimensions. So what that is, is we're actually going to make some objects that, uh, I mean, well first of all maybe I should tell uh, people what Dimensions are for those that don't know. They are uh, Rift's take on housing, if you like, but they're a little bit more uh, freeform than that. They are like a little uh, instance of uh, Talara and players can put any objects they like, they can scale them, they can rotate them, they can make the most unbelievable things. I mean, if people actually go and look at some of the dimensions that have been made in Rift, they are incredible. They're just absolutely amazing. Boats and castles and just, you name it, people have made it. Um, and we are going to add to that objects that players can um, uh, buy on the store and put into their dimensions that will actually allow them to set up uh, PvP games um, that they can then have their friends come in or anyone come in and actually participate in. And we're going to start relatively simple and build on it, but um, for example, maybe you would buy uh, some spawn-in points. So, you know, the Guardian spawn in in this place in my dimension and the Defiant spawn in in this place in my dimension. And it's a five-minute deathmatch game and you buy an object that actually sets up that rule set for you and then just people go at it. And they can build um, and they can build whatever the heck rule they, sets they can build whatever they like. I mean, in they the still, game right now, like capture the flag? Or? Well, they still have um, all of the tools mm. of the dimension, so they can build whatever the heck they like. They can make a crazy maze for people to fight in if they want, or they can just leave it completely open or anything. We're going to, like I say, we're going to start simple to see how this goes, and we'll probably just start with deathmatch. It's sort of like the simplest type of thing, you know. Um, but uh, And you would buy an object that would make it a five-minute 
game. If you plunk down two, it would become a 10 minute game. Three, it would become a 15 minute game. So people will have the flexibility to set up what they want. But our plan is absolutely to then kind of like make new objects that maybe make a capture the flag point that you can place down. Or maybe it's a domination map where you have to, you know, or a survival map. I mean, people that have uh, played some of the war fronts that we've got in the game will know, like, like exactly. Like so, uh, and all, and what, what, makes me most excited about this is I know that as we give these little tools to players, they're going to come up with something we hadn't even thought of. And that, that's, that's when it really gets exciting, when the players sort of like get these things. Uh, as I was saying before, what they've managed to make with uh, the objects we gave them just for dimensions already is absolutely fantastic. Ja, das war das Interview mit Simon Finch. Uh, vielen Dank nochmal. Und uh, falls ihr Wünsche, Fragen, Anregungen, Kritik habt, wie wir es beim nächsten Mal besser machen können oder was wir anders machen sollen, dann einfach in die Kommentarfunktion und das Video. Dankeschön.